We told her.
The Lord be with you. Thank you and welcome to worship this morning. All of you here and all of you worshiping on live stream this morning, welcome. A few announcements as we begin our worship. For our um, home-centered folks who are worshiping on live stream, I would invite those of you here in the sanctuary to put your phones on airplane mode while you're here. It helps us have the best quality of live stream upload. That would be great. Um, a reminder that we are still giving towards Advent Farms for ELCA World Hunger. So if you've not yet had an opportunity to give toward Advent Farms, that information is in your blue announcement page. Uh, tonight is our uh, festival Christmas concert with our choir and orchestra, and it should be really lovely. So you're all invited to that. Ticketing is required. It is a free will offering, um, but you do need to go online and get a ticket. That information is in your bulletin. Um, that will be an in-person event only that won't be live streamed this evening. So just so that you know, before you make your decision, what your plans are, um, factor that into it as well. Please um, register for Christmas work worship. A lot of you already have. So thank you for doing that. It helps us plan for communion and seating and all kinds of things. So if you know which service you're going to be at 11, 3, 5 or 730 uh, to go ahead and register for that Christmas Eve service would be really helpful to us as we plan on our side of things. And last but not least, we have a Discover Augustana class starting in January, starting on January 9th. And that series of classes, Pastor Ann and, and I and some um, lay ministry leaders lead those classes. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Augustana, if you've been a longtime member and you're like, maybe I need to catch up on things, um, you're welcome to come to Discover Augustana class. And um, as well as if you've been a continuing visitor or a visitor and are curious about what it might mean to be a member of this congregation. So there's lots of different uh, ways you can interact with the, the Discover Augustana class. And now I invite you to stand and greet each other as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who inspires with wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills us with peace. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail to believe that your good news is for us, we falter in our care of creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, Holy One, and assure us again of your transforming grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus enfolds you in grace. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are strengthened anew to follow the way of peace. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We welcome the Leos family to light the Advent wreath today. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Each week as we've gathered for worship, we have lit a candle to remind us to watch and wait for Jesus' coming. This morning, we complete the circle of the candles and anticipate the light that we will share on Christmas Eve. The birth of a child is a sign of new life and hope. It was through the birth of a baby that God came into our world. The mighty God became Emmanuel, God with us. In the birth of Jesus, God pro God's promise of hope, love, and forgiveness is made a new and wonderful way. Joseph and Mary showed great courage as they responded to God's call. We can have courage to respond to God as they did because God is with us. We relight the Advent candles of waiting, longing, and joy. The flame of the fourth candle gives us courage for our daily living by reminding us of the promise of Emmanuel, God with us.
A reading from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of the, his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the end of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. reading from Hebrews. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offer offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, see God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book, it is written for me, of, him, of me. When he said above, you have neither desired, no ta not taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary sent, set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in, in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the children to come up and spend a few minutes with Shanna. Alice? When we tell someone something, does anyone else have any more to add to that? A note that we send? What else do we have down there? Yeah. A message is something you can text. Yes, text. You know what? That was the first one I thought of, too, as a message. We can text him? A message is something that someone is trying to communicate. Yes, trying to communicate. So, also, then, what is a little bit different do you think is a messenger? Maybe I've touched on that, but... Go ahead, Elise. Um, someone who brings you news and someone who brings you news. Things that might give you, uh, like, a heads up. That's a great example. So he's giving a heads up, letting you know some news. Like if you had a B on your report card, you get a report card to let you know. These are great ways that we receive messages or our messengers. Last week, I witnessed a lot of you guys being messengers. Do you remember what you were doing that might have been sharing a message? Yeah. Elise, did you have something? Um, how um, um, Jesus uh, was born and yeah. the story of Jesus and um, Mary and Joseph. Yeah, it's perfect. The story of Jesus being born. And because we had a Christmas pageant, didn't we, last week? You guys were messengers who brought good news of Jesus' birth to the congregation. And I bet other people have ways that we've shared good messages. Or sometimes we have to share sad messages. But in church, we also hear messages. Sometimes Pastor Caitlin or Pastor Ann, we hear them. We hear them when the choir sings a special music or in the liturgy we read. And so we get to be receivers of messages and we also get to send them out. Do you guys ever sometimes wonder what is being talked about in church? Are you a little confused at what's going on? Does that ever happen to any of you? Oh, 
That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. But if you might sometimes feel like, I don't know what's happening, or this message is a bit confusing, maybe you guys know this, but out on that table out there in the narthex, when you walk in, we have bulletins just for you guys so that you can learn more about what's being talked about in church. It's something you could do during worship or maybe take at home and you could talk about with your parents. To, and again, to help us as we share the message of Jesus' love. So as you leave today, and if you haven't had one, go ahead and stop at that table and grab one so you can see more about them, okay? Would you guys please pray with me? Dear God, thanks for being our messenger. Help us to be messengers of your good news. We love you. Amen. Thanks, friends, for coming up. is it about Mary? As Jesus' mother and a key figure during Advent and Christmas every year, most of us have some kind of opinion about her. She is divinized by some, romanticized by others. She is prayed to, sung to, questioned, overestimated, elevated, and celebrated. We know nothing about her, before her visit from the angel Gabriel. There are no character references in the scriptures or list of qualities that support her for being Jesus's mother. We simply get the announcement of being chosen, of Mary's consent to God's will, and then her dash to the hill country to stay with her cousin Elizabeth for three months. Mary is newly pregnant. Elizabeth is six months along. Mary is pregnant too soon, not yet married. Elizabeth is pregnant too late, no longer young at all, and had no other, ch no other children. What a pair they made in the first century when women's sexuality was closely guarded and honor bound. Both of their pregnancies were taboo disrupting social norms when pregnancies, with pregnancies that bore shame and humiliation. Earlier in the story, we are told that Elizabeth remained in seclusion for five months after she conceived. It was in the sixth month that the angel Gabriel announced God's plans to Mary. Mary knew the lowliness she sang about in verse 48 because her consent to God's will to bear this holy child, shamed her honor and risked her life. Mary and Elizabeth show us what courage looks like in the face of shame. It looks like connecting with someone else who knows a similar shame or humiliation, hanging out with them, belonging with them. Mary and Elizabeth show us what the church is, not what it should be, what it is. Yesterday, our family attended the funeral of one of our longtime friends. His name is Paul. He gave, his son gave one of the eulogies and talked about Paul's ability to love unconditionally and how that was connected to his faith. And it wasn't that Paul was okay with willy-nilly whatever. It's that he knew that people, including his children, were more valuable and vastly more important than whatever it is they might have done. Facing the consequences for whatever happens, forgiving where forgiveness is needed, and staying connected through it all are the main things because people are the main thing. Mary and Elizabeth give us a first century example of what this looked like. And our friend Paul yesterday gave us a 21st century example of what that looked like. And there are so many other examples too. 
In the last few weeks, a number of people have talked with me about their worship experience just kind of spontaneously. A couple of folks feel certain that communion has been key for them in overcoming deeply personal challenges. Others have mentioned that worship connects with their grief in ways that they can't explain, but they assure me that it does. And I'm sure that each one of us here would express our worship experiences quite differently from each other, from the mundane to the mysterious to everything in between. The impression made by the Bible story and by people's worship experiences, the common thread seems to be one of belonging. No matter how imperfect each of us are or how imperfect our life situations may be, we have a place to belong because we first belong to God. And because of God's promises, we, we, the big we, we all belong to each other. In belonging, we are comforted in our humiliations, and we also find courage for whatever comes next for each one of us. Courage in belonging is one of Mary's gifts to us through her example of her and Elizabeth, and through the example of being called by God without character references. Our Welcome Connection ministry here at church focuses on belonging. The ministry team started meeting a few months before COVID was even a thing. Naming the group became a part of figuring out what we're up to. And I've learned a thing or two about groups naming themselves. It takes a few meeting times to get it done. But I've also learned to step back and to watch ministry groups names form as group members define themselves, understand themselves and understand their goals. So ta-da, Welcome Connection evolved out of those conversations. The name of this ministry also named part of the goal. Welcome Connection reaches out and invites folks to belong, as well as welcome and connect folks with each other. Because it's one thing to worship together, and it's another thing to be church with each other. When Welcome Connection regrouped just a few months ago and started meeting again, the first priority was reaching out to congregation members and reconnecting with them. Phone calls were made to let people know that we were worshiping in person, deepening our sense of belonging after being disconnected for so long physically was a top priority. After all, reaching out and inviting goes better if there are connecting points in place. Welcome Connection's urgency also grows from the awareness that 53 new continuing visitors in 31 households have been worshiping more frequently and regularly. Some of you who are continuing visitors started worshiping via live stream and are now in person. Others of you found worship in person with the awareness of a deep need for connection and belonging and meaning and faith. And whatever the reason, Welcome Connections ministry is finding ways to help folks connect with each other. Now, obviously, and this is really stating the obvious, everyone can't know everyone in a congregation like ours. But there are ways to belong in groups and ministries that help us get to know each other and have a smaller place to belong. Some ways of belonging are established, like Sunday lunch after 1030 worship, where you can go down and eat and hang out. Everybody's welcome there. And other ways are just beginning, like men's Bible study, which is starting because someone had an idea and there's a willing leader for it. So thanks to Aaron and Brian. Everyone's creative ideas and experiments are invited by Welcome Connection Ministry. Feel free to brainstorm with each other. Bring your ideas to the team along with somebody who could possibly lead it. That's kind of the trick. In a disconnected world, Elizabeth and Mary's example of belonging is one that is worth pondering for our congregation at this time and in this place. 
Additionally, there's a special name for Mary that comes from the Greek Orthodox Church, Theotokos in Greek. Theotokos means God-bearer. Mary becomes a God-bearer when she consented to God's plan for her to conceive a child and name him Jesus. When Mary calls herself his servant in verse 46, she echoes verse 38 when she calls herself a servant of the Lord in her consent. Missing in the English is a closer translation to the Greek doule. Hang with me here. Doule means slave in the full expression, slave of the Lord. Slave of the Lord aligns with the Jewish use of the honorary title slave of God used to describe Moses, Joshua, Abraham, David, Isaac, the prophets, Jacob, and one woman, Hannah. Mary singing about lowliness describes her humiliation while in the same breath, singing about being a slave of God places her in this long line of ancestors who were called by God. She is simultaneously elevated by that connection with her ancestors, even as she's humiliated by her God-bearing body outside of accepted social norms. Quite differently, but along similar lines, We become God bearers when we're baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Through our baptism, bearing God's love into the world through labors of love for our neighbors. As God bearers, we are given opportunities to consent to God's will, to gain courage from belonging to each other, and to take risks that may humiliate us on behalf of each other and our neighbors. In the hymn of the day that we'll sing shortly after the sermon, we'll sing the Magnificat, Mary's song of justice and deliverance that we heard read in those verses from the Luke reading. When we sing this Magnificat, it gives us time to think about how we bear God to each other and to the wider world. And if you're not much of a singer, just go ahead and listen to your neighbor who will be singing near you. Here's the question. Would you use words like Mary? Or would you use other words to describe what bearing God's will into the world looks like for you? Regardless of the words you use, you are God bearers. Blessed are you among people, as you're blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit for your own sake and for the sake of the world. Amen.
with the whole people of God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of hope, in this season of Advent, remind us of the glad tidings of great joy that come to us as a baby in a manger, the things that we have and the things that we are thankful for. Open our eyes to the good news of Christ's presence in our lives and in the lives of all people, but especially those who, are, who suffer and are in need. We pray for people who are depressed, homeless, lonely, and sick. Hear us, O oh God. God of care, <coughs> care, we pray for friends and family who are in need of hope and healing. Kyle, Coleridge, Laura, Amy, Helma, Bill, Betty, Louise, Diana, Ben, Susan, Valerie, and Elizabeth. And compassionate Lord, we pray for consolation of the family and friends of those who have died and for all who grieve during this Christmas season. Kay Hitchin, Mary Caba Polisi, Doug Machino, Jack Oxley, and Marty Madison. Hear us, O God. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant safe and successful travel to all of those who are traveling to see friends and family for Christmas. And please give us patience, strength, and understanding when interacting with our extended families this week. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend prayers that we have asked for. Guide our lives, inspire our thoughts, shape our attitudes, and fill us with hope and joy. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with those who are around you this morning.
God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look for hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This table of Christ is open to all. Here we receive grace and love and the strength that we need to continue our vocation as God-bearers in the world. 
If you are joining us on live stream, we invite you to receive communion with bread or crackers, wine or juice with the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Here in the sanctuary, you'll be directed by the ushers down the main aisle to receive a wafer and then either grape juice or wine. The grape juice is the lighter colored liquid. And then the small class can be put in the basket that you'll see on the altar rail. Together we sing the Lamb of God and then we invite you to come forward.
Please stand as you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, make us bearers of your word, sharing your gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, the next Sunday, December 26th, we just have one worship service, and that will be this service at 1030 on December 26th. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Christ is near. Thanks. 